So you're an attorney and you've decided to go out on your own. Now what? You need a plan and you're not alone. Join expert host Adriana Linares and her distinguished guests on New Solo. Tune in to the lively conversation as they share insights and information about how to successfully run your law firm here on Legal Talk Network. All right, it's time for another episode of New Solo on Legal Talk Network. I'm Adriana Linares. I'm your hostess. I'm a legal technology trainer and consultant. I help lawyers and law firms use technology better. Before we get started with today's episode, I want to make sure and take a couple of moments to thank our sponsors. Answer One is a leading virtual receptionist and answering service provider for lawyers. You can find out more by giving them a call at 800 Answer One or online at answerone.com. And that's answer the number one.com. Thanks to our sponsor, Clio. Clio's cloud based practice management software makes it easy to manage your law firm from intake to invoice. Try it for free at Clio, C L I O. Com. Law Clerk is where attorneys hire freelance lawyers. There are no sign-up or monthly fees. Only pay the flat fee price you set. Increase your profits, not your overhead. Learn more at lawclerk.legal and be sure to enter rebate New Solo 300 altogether. That's New Solo 300 for a $300 rebate after your first project. Courtfiling.net. E-file court documents with ease in California, Illinois, Indiana, and Texas. If you file in Los Angeles Superior Court, you know that e-filing has recently become mandatory and courtfiling.net is there to help. All right, so I'm here with Renee Thompson. Renee happens to be one of my very good friends. And if you're a regular listener to New Solo, you've definitely heard her in the past as a co-host for me. She regularly co-hosts other Legal Talk Network podcasts when uh, the guys are out on the road. And I did have her recently on one of my favorite episodes with another Florida attorney, Renee's a Florida attorney, Zach Zero West, talking about how their use of technology allowed them to up and move their law firms when hurricanes were on their way pummeling through Florida. So if you're interested in learning more about, um, what would we call that, Renee? Being a mobile lawyer. Yeah. (laughs) And uh, being disaster ready. Right. So being a disaster ready mobile lawyer or not even disaster. I mean, it could be, you know, your law firm might be under construction or there might be construction happening next door and you need to get out of your firm for a while. So it doesn't always have to be disaster. But uh, that's a great episode to go back and listen to. But for now, thanks for coming on, Renee. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me, Adriana. It's always fun. Tell everybody a little bit about yourself. Sure. Uh, So I am a mediator with Upchurch, Watson, White, and Max. And I also maintain a small solo practice in Ocala, Florida. And I serve on the Florida Bar Board of Governors and have served on that board now for eight years. So I am... You know, thrilled to be here, thrilled to be currently at a Board of Governors meeting as yeah. as we record this, which is wonderful. It is. It's a, it's a good time to see not just everyone, but also catch up on all the Board of Governors activities, which that's how you and I met and became friends. Absolutely. Um, we work together on the technology committee and you're one of my, so if technology were a drug, you would be one of my pushers. <laughs> That helps. <laughs> that Well, they're making me technology chairs. So yeah. that tells you a little bit about the habit. <laughs> right. And the fact that you love technology, which we're going to talk about what um, technologies you use both as a solo, but also as part of your mediation practice, because you are a walking, talking billboard for the good use of technology and how it makes your life and your practice easier. So we'll talk about that in a few minutes. But before, I want to really just talk a little bit more about your work with the Board of Governors, because I think you want to be president of the Florida Bar someday. I am definitely going to be putting my name in for that this fall. So for president-elect, yes. So I'm very excited about that as well. So some really fun things on the horizon. It gives me goosebumps because a lot of people would think, and part of the reason I wanted to do this is because I think a lot of people would think that only big firm lawyers would be able to even take on that sort of challenge or if I may have the balls to run, but no, it's, it's not like that. So tell us a little bit about why it's easy and great and cool for a solo or small firm practitioner to be able to run for president of one of the largest bars. So we have some experience in that now as a bar. We have yeah. our current president um, is Michelle Suskauer, who was a small firm attorney pretty much her entire practice. And 
you know, one of the reasons um, that I've been able to do it is because of technology, honestly, because we now have the ability uh, to take our practices on the road with us. So as we travel for the board, as we travel for board work, all of those things can come with us now. So it makes it so different than the old model of having to have someone in the office take care of all that for you because you have it all with you. I agree. And do you think that attorneys in Florida who are going to have to decide whether to vote for you or not are going to look at you and go, holy moly, she's a solo just like me. She can not only run her practice, but also do this board work and run one of the biggest bars in the state. Do you think that's a, I think that's a total asset, don't you? Well, you'd be surprised to learn if you look at the Florida Bar's data that 68% of our lawyers are in firms of about five or less. Yeah. And if you look at firms of 10 or less, that's almost 75%. So the majority of our bar members are in solo or small firms. And so for me, I think, you know, they're able to accomplish amazing things in their practices. So yeah, I don't think it'll be a hard hard leap for them no, at all. I think they're going to look and go, holy cow, she's one of us. Well, it, I mean, I you represent so. the interests of solo and small firms better than anybody because you are both a solo and with, you know, a small, smallish firm, I guess. Well, I definitely understand what it takes to run a practice, um, the administrative part of it, you know, there's the daily upkeep of having to deal with, you know, all of the things that solos and small firms have to attend to because you don't have other people who are handling yeah, that for you. You don't have the resources like big firm exactly. lawyers do. Exactly. No, I think that's awesome. Well, that's great. So if somebody like, let's use this for a minute. If somebody were to say, Renee, why should I vote for you for Florida bar president? What would you tell them? Well, I can tell them that if they had the opportunity to vote for someone like me, that they would see that I've been advocating for their interests for a very long time. I started in the Florida Bar my second year um, as a baby attorney, mm. and I have continued my service ever since. I was on the Young Lawyers Division board when I first started, and I served on that board for over eight years when I became president of the entire division. I had an opportunity then to continue my work and service on some really important committees with the bar um, until I was elected to the Senior Board of Governors and have now really taken the charge to continue my committee work and chair work and help essentially shape the Leadership Academy. Yeah, you, uh, that oh, that's right. Exists. That was your so, baby. Well, Gene Pettis, who was the president at the mm -hmm. time, you know, asked me at the time to help him create that. So it was just an honor and a privilege to do it. And I love seeing all of our Academy alums and all they're doing across the bar. Tell everyone a little bit about the Academy because we might have some Florida lawyers who haven't heard of it and would be interested in joining. Absolutely. So the Academy has this mission of teaching leadership skills to lawyers so that they can become leaders in their communities and within the profession. And so every fall when committee applications come out, leadership applications come out as well if you're interested in being an Academy Fellow. And so you submit that application, and if you're selected, you serve the following bar year in the Academy. It's a one-year program. It's an in-depth program where you not only get to see a big picture of what's going on in the bar, but they actually teach you the leadership skills that you need, whether it's your goal to run a community foundation, whether it's to continue your service in the bar or um, maybe just run for judge, you know, whatever it is that your passion is to lead in this profession, it can really help you achieve that. Yeah, that's great. You know, I get a little choked up when I talk to you and our John. John Stewart is our the, incoming president. Our incoming president. And I, I, I really do. I get choked up because you guys are so passionate and so truly dedicated to, to help, like just your bar work. It's amazing. And when I was interviewed for John's, so John Stewart is going to become president of the Florida Bar in June of 2019. And the Florida Bar magazine called me. He gave them my name as one of his friends to talk about him. And I literally started to cry. Like, did you really? Like I almost did just now listening to you. And I know it sounds so cheesy, but it's true. But when I was talking about John, I did. I choked up because... It's just so refreshing to see someone who's so, just like you, so into it. And the reason I really choked up when I was talking about John is because after his year is done, he's gone. Sure. You know, the bar has this interesting way of sort of <laughs> sunsetting. And you guys <laughs> sail off after a presidential year. And it. Um, I just really love seeing attorneys who are 
just so enthusiastic about helping other attorneys. And John's always been that way. He has, um, just like you. It's John was president of the Young Lawyers Division, and I had the privilege of serving on his board as mm. a young lawyer. So I've seen him in action for many, many, many years. Yeah. And so now serving on the senior board with him, to see him in that capacity and see him grow in his leadership styles and all that he's done for our profession has just been, it's been a really neat experience. It is. I know. And being a part of it for me, just sort of sitting on the sidelines and helping has been really great. But one of the cool things that John did that you helped with was make technology CLE mandatory in Florida. Yes, our board really saw an opportunity for Florida lawyers to get the training that they needed. I think when bar members hear, oh, goodness, I have more CLE credits to get, at first they groan, but then they realize one of the things that does for them is it allows the bar the opportunity to teach them the skills that they're going to need in their practices. So, you know, finding your technology CLEs, of course, through Legal Fuel or other other places really isn't as difficult maybe as it sounded at yeah. first. Um, and so the membership has really, I think, taken to having the ability to learn what it's going to take, especially in today's technology age, to be competitive um, and productive and efficient. One of the cool things we get to do because of that or for that is the technology road shows. Oh, I love those. So let's talk about those real quick because maybe we will have Florida lawyers who are part of a board or a bar who hasn't had a technology road show come by and they'll email to invite us to come. Sure. So the Young Lawyers Division has worked with Adriana, our technology consultant, and they have put together like this, you know, powerhouse of technology information for folks. And so if you are interested in a technology road show, you know, please, please, please reach out to the Young Lawyers Division or to anyone involved in the technology committee, myself or Adriana, who can definitely get that scheduled for you. You know, your members will benefit greatly from the information that's provided because the reality is I don't know if you get it anywhere else. Yeah, It's the practicalities of how to make your practice run um, how to help with confidential information as an attorney and at the same time utilize the technology you have before you. Yeah, it's a prepackaged four-hour technology CLE O plus one ethics. So we get three technology credits and one ethics credit and we bring the show to your local bar. So yeah, definitely reach out. Well, before we switch over and start talking about the technology that you use in your practice, let's take a quick break and listen to a couple messages from our sponsors. Imagine what you could do with an extra eight hours per week. That's how much time legal professionals save with Clio, the world's leading practice management software. With intuitive time tracking, billing, and matter management, Clio streamlines everything you do to run your practice from intake to invoice. Try Clio for free and then get a 10% discount for your first six months when you sign up with the code NEWSOLO10. That's new solo one zero, And do that at Clio.com, C-L-I-O dot com. Is your firm experiencing missed calls, empty voicemail boxes, and potential clients you'll never hear from again? Enter Answer One Virtual Receptionists. They're more than just an answering service. Answer One's available 24 seven. They can even schedule appointments, respond to emails, integrate with Clio, and much more. Answer One helps make sure your clients have the experience they deserve. Give them a call at 1-800-ANSWER-1 or visit them at answerone.com forward slash podcast for a special offer. Okay, so we're back and I'm here with Renee Thompson, who's a dear friend, a Florida attorney, a mediator, a solo practitioner, and a technology enthusiast. So now I want to ask you, Renee, about the technology that you actually use in your practice. So I'm trying to remember when we first started, you were with a larger firm. I was a, mid, then, a mid-sized firm out of Orlando. Mm -hmm. Yep. Then you went out on your own. That's correct. And you looked around and said, okay, how can I use technology? And trying also to figure out how I could compete with technology that some of the larger firms are able and access to. Um, and it became very clear to me there were a lot of options for solo and small firm lawyers that frankly didn't even exist five years prior. Yeah. So I really felt like when I had the opportunity to make that leap a few years ago, I was in a really good place technology-wise um, to make a leap as a solo and small firm lawyer. And take a lot of the same resources and technology that your big firm used. Absolutely. When was this? Five years ago? Three and a half. Okay. Three and a half years ago. Right. So at that firm, they used net documents. Correct. And I, did they have a practice management program? Uh, Probably no. not. So you came out and you said, okay, well, I cannot live without net documents. <laughs> I had used it for so many years while I worked at the firm that I had just become accustomed not only to being able to access my documents remotely, 
Um, but being able to search for all of my files, my topical files, and you know, once you get into a system, it's a totally different way to use a different one or just to go back to a regular Word system of you know file folders. It just didn't offer the level of security I was looking for at all. So for those of you that are listening, if you're a regular listener, you have heard me talk about how awesome and I think important Net Documents is. But for those of you who haven't, if this happens to be the first time you're hearing about it, it's a cloud-based, legal specific, sophisticated document management system. It's a little bit expensive now because they closed out this, they used to sell solo seats. Now they don't, but if you're interested, contact me, I might have a secret in for you. But it costs about $99 to $200 a month. And for me, if I was a solo, that price tag would not prevent me from having this tool because it is so critical to helping you manage not only your email, uh, excuse me, your documents, but your emails because it sits inside of Outlook and also really helps manage emails. So net documents was important to you. It was. And because of the way they store emails, it was really important to me because I yeah. didn't want to have to maintain a printed copy of every oh email gosh. that ever came through the door. So right. being able to store it through net documents was just essential. Great. So we got you net documents, mm -hmm. and then you had to choose a practice management program. Correct. I chose Clio um, because of their third-party integrations, and it made complete sense with net documents because sure. they sync. So that was an easy step for me. And what do you use for accounting? Well, I don't currently have a system through my practice management. Um, you know, I just have a, an accountant that yeah. I use. But um, you so know, your Clio than, pushes out to a QuickBooks file exactly that your accounting yeah. account. It's not a it's not a specialty software, right? And that works. So that's your technology cocktail so far. Mm -hmm. Clio for practice management, which exports to QuickBooks, Net Documents. Anything else that you use? Um, there are a couple of things that I just use, you know, through apps or whatnot, you know, because I do a lot of mediation work. So there are many apps that I utilize with my clients so that we are able to communicate, um, whether it's through video conferencing or whether it's through, um, you know, the they may use for their timelines or others, um, but no particular software otherwise, mostly just through app-based programs or through video streaming. Yeah, let's talk about Zoom. Yeah. And what we were just talking about, how you're able to do breakout rooms with yes. it. So tell us about your use of Zoom. So Zoom.us. Yes, Zoom to me is one of the easiest video conferencing systems to utilize. We use it a lot within the Florida Bar for just regular meetings. Mm -hmm. And I've been able to now integrate that into my practice life as well. So if someone wants to have a conference with me to discuss a mediation, I can send them a Zoom link as long as they have an iPad or iPhone or something that has a camera on the other side. It's very simple for them to just go ahead and click on it and we can speak and I can share things on my screen with them um, very simply. And now as a mediator, I'm able to use them as well because they have breakout rooms. Yeah, so that's so cool. It is. So you can have private conferences when you're even in a large group, which, like I said, that technology just blew my mind and really opens up for alternative dispute resolution so many opportunities because you don't have to be in the same place. And maybe you have an adjuster from another state or maybe you have a client who couldn't be there for some reason and everyone's okay with them appearing you know, by Zoom. It's very easily done. Yeah, I use Zoom too. And so for those of you, again, who may not have, I've mentioned it all the time, but if you haven't heard of it, it's a video conferencing software service. Um, it's cloud-based. It's $15 a month, I think. Yeah, $15 a month is the lowest price. And I think you get up to 100 attendees and they don't have to appear by video. You can also have people that just call in by conference call. So it's a phone conferencing and or a video conferencing plus screen sharing service. Yeah. So I love that one. It's I think great. It's you critical. know, I, I teach a class at the University of Florida Law School in the spring on practice management and we actually use Zoom to Zoom in our speakers. Yeah, I did so, it. So yeah, oh, that's right. Um, so, you know, our speakers have the opportunity to be all over the nation and, and talk to our students there. So it's really... It's pretty amazing. Yeah, that's a great service. What other tools like that do you use that are critical? Well, let's talk about Tally. <laughs> I'm so sad to hear about Tally. Let's not even talk about it. Never mind. We well, could talk about it, but you guys can't like, even have it. I would like to talk about it from the sense that if there's someone out there who's listening, <laughs> <laughs> voice recognition billing is a must. It's an absolute must for lawyers, especially for mobile lawyers. And Tally provided that service so seamlessly. It integrated with my practice management platform. So if there's someone out there who is nope. interested in, in 
finding a, a service like that, please let us know about it because I'm I'm still sad by the news. I know. Yes. <laughs> so if you guys aren't aware, there was a product called telltally.com, T-A-L-I, that allowed you to capture your time entries by voice through Amazon's Alexa services. And anyway, they had to sunset the product. I guess they didn't get enough lawyers that were interested. How is that possible? <laughs> um, what are the tools? You know, one of the things I think that's probably the most important for me now um, is just what I use for my hardware. Um, oh, yeah. So I bought a Surface, a Great. Microsoft Surface, um, and I have been so extremely pleased with it. I didn't know that I wouldn't be able to do everything I was doing on my iPad because that was kind of my go-to for a long time. And then I realized how much I missed my USB port. <laughs> so <laughs> getting my Surface has really simplified things for me um, in the solo setting. So really, really happy with that. Um, if you're looking for some type of new platform, I love it. It comes with a pen. So there's like all of these electronic signatures and yeah. things you can do remotely for drafting that I just couldn't do even on my Apple. So I was just like a like a, a big step in the right direction for me, I thought. Yeah, I love the Surface too. I yeah. have one. It's what we're using today. I even picked up a little Go, one of the little versions to just use for my San Diego bar work. So it's been great. Okay. Well, anything else? Any other critical tools? Um, nothing that comes to mind at the moment. You know, I'm still waiting for uh, some folks to, you know, come out with tools that will just integrate seamlessly all the things we just talked about. So, you know, if we could find all these platforms so that they all talk to one another, that's really, really where it's at for lawyers. So they don't have to keep duplicating the wheel. I think it's getting better and better. It you is. Know, especially with when you're using Clio like you do as your base, because it has that open API and all those integration partners. Mm -hmm. um, it works. It works great. What I still struggle with, even today, even through all my techiness, is, uh, I don't even know how to say this. I have all these inroads for information. So I have like a, a chat and a connection service, a contact service on my website. I've got a forum on Google for information that I'll send out when someone wants a technology audit initially. I've got Office 365. I've got G Suite. I've got Clio. I've got Grow. I've got VC. I have, you know, I, and because these services are so affordable and they're so useful, I just keep, keep adding on. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, you know, it's just crazy. So as soon as I figure out that magic, well, I do use Zapier a lot, actually. Zapier is a great it's way. so interesting. Yeah. So I use Zapier as much as I can to get all of those disparate services to sort of... I've been playing around with Trello lately. And so that in conjunction with Zapier can do some really neat things. Oh, you know what? I have a great Trello story. Okay. But let's take a quick break, listen to a couple more messages from our sponsors, and come back. Courtfiling.net, your solution for electronic filing in California, Illinois, Indiana, and Texas. Courtfiling.net provides a better e-filing experience so you can spend more time helping clients. Because they know that work sometimes happens after hours, Courtfiling.net offers 24-7 phone, email, and chat support. Visit them at Courtfiling.net to receive 30 days of unlimited free electronic filings and see how you too can e-file court documents with ease. Law Clerk is where attorneys go to hire freelance lawyers. Whether you need a first year to perform legal research or a seasoned attorney to assist with a complicated appellate brief, Law Clerk has hundreds of freelance lawyers with every level of experience and expertise. There are no sign-up or monthly fees. Only pay the flat fee price you set. Increase your profits, not your overhead. Learn more at lawclerk.legal. Okay, so about Trello. I've never used it, and I had not a need or an interest for using it. And I thought, oh my God, I do not need another service. But I just signed up for Fancy Hands. Oh, I love Fancy okay, Hands. Okay. I, I use Fancy Hands. All right. Because I, <laughs> uh, I got it. I got the nod from Liz. We have another friend, Liz McCausland, who's also a mediator and a good friend of ours. And she's always using Fancy Hands. So I finally got Fancy Hands and I have been using them. So let's talk a little bit about that service. Sure. So Fancy Hands is a virtual assistant for those of you out there who just need some help with daily tasks that, frankly, you probably shouldn't be giving to your legal secretary because they're not billable, but can handle, you know, very, very fast 
and very efficient. They are wonderful. I mean, you can send them everything from please find a present for somebody and they'll do all the research on it to I need you to create a spreadsheet for me and, you know, fill in all the formulas. So like I don't spend my time anymore trying to even remotely create spreadsheets or anything remotely related to that. I just send it to them and they take care of all of it and send it back to me and it's ready to go. You know, I um, one of the things I had them do was I had to frequently ask questions that I wanted to put into a spreadsheet, but oh. it was on a PDF. So I thought, well, I could sit here and copy and paste it's, all this stuff. Right. Forget it. I send it off to them and they get back pretty fast. And they have different levels of service. They call them requests. And it, oh, so wait, so let me back up. You subscribe monthly. And I think it's either $25 a month or maybe 75, but it's pretty affordable. And if you go to their website, they have a ton of frequently asked questions about what you can and can't ask them to do. And most of the administrative stuff that we have, they will do, and they do it pretty well. And they turn around the information pretty quickly. And they're all US-based assistants, which I also use Upwork a lot. Mm. But there are some things I don't, for some reason, want to trust a data entry person in the Philippines to do. So (laughs) I don't know why mentally, I just think, oh, it's probably better they're here in the US. So Both of those are very critical tools for me, fancy hands. Oh, and so the point of that is they integrate with Trello. So then I ended up having to go get myself a quick little Trello account to be able to share data and information with them. And that's been great. So another service I added to my toolkit of services. I think those are two really important ones, though, because, you know, Trello visually is so wonderful to keep track of things and and to maintain lists and boards of how you want to do things. And then you've got fancy hands, which you know, they're just an on-the-go assistant. So say you need something typed or say you need something really quickly done, you can send it to them and they'll send it right back to you. Yeah. And it's just taken care of. Um, so you don't even have to remember to tell a legal assistant or someone else to take care of it. So it's just very, um, it's ease of use for me because, you know, we talk about being a mobile lawyer. Well, you've got to have mobile assistants with you mm-hmm. and you can send it to them at all hours. So it's not like you have to wait until the person gets back on Monday to do it. They have people all the time taking care of that stuff It's true. For you. They're seven days a week. And you buy blocks of time. So they're 20 minute increments. So if you have a task that's 20 minutes or less, you've only used one block of time. So I probably have enough time between now and 20 years from now that I've purchased (laughs) because I know I'm going to use it. Um, I have them help me with everything down to my Christmas card list. I mean, they, they really do keep you organized if you want them to. And they are so helpful. It is just having a pair of extra hands and they're fancy. It's true. One of the things that I love about you just being, not just being a mobile lawyer, but you're so enthusiastic about transportation as well. (laughs) So we're really excited about the Bright Line, which is a new high-speed train that currently goes between Miami and West Palm. Just bought by Virgin Trains. Yes. So I read that article you sent. So I think that's awesome. And you immediately sent me the app because you are truly a mobile lawyer. So you hop on that train. I love it. It's Wi-Fi. You can get work done and you don't have to stress about being on some of the busier roads with, you know, all the congestion and they have a lift station when you get there. So you just hop in a lift and go wherever you need to go. So when it gets to Orlando, it'll be a life changing event for those of us who utilize it. And you will be traveling a lot over the next several months. I mean, think about from a lawyer perspective, just the ability to be able to get to courthouses across the state by hopping on a high-speed train like that. I mean, it drops off literally at the federal courthouse in Miami. So, you know, you don't need to worry about parking and being all stressed out from being on 95. Yeah. Hop on that bright line and you show up, you know, with bells on. It is a totally different experience. And you'll be using it a lot because... (laughs) I hope so. I'm really excited about the Orlando connection. I know, me too. Yeah. So a couple more things I want to ask you or just make sure we talk about before we wrap it up here. I'm really excited that you're going to explore running for president elect of the bar. I want to make sure everybody knows that you have been the chair or involved deeply in literally every single board and section of this bar. Nobody knows how this bar operates, runs, and thinks like you do. And I just think that's so critical for people to to know that you're the deal. You're the real deal, and you love this bar. I do love our bar, and I really do try to be a hands-on leader. I learned a long time ago from some really wonderful mentors that you should never ask of other people what you aren't willing to give yourself. And so I've really tried to use that as a mantra in how I've led organizations um, how I've given my time. 
because it's important. It's important for people to see that if you're going to ask it of them, that you'll do it yourself. And so I've spent the majority of my career uh, focused on Florida Bar Service um, and leadership roles. And so for me, the opportunity, you know, to work with some of the best and brightest attorneys in the entire state in the bar organization um, is just a thrilling opportunity. And I just cannot say enough wonderful things about all of the leaders that we get to work with here on a daily basis. I agree, because I get to touch it just a little bit with my consulting work with you guys. It's been great. Can we talk about Tommy? Sure. Tell us about, so um, tell us about Tommy, who's your hubs? Sure. Who's your high school sweetheart? <laughs> so Tommy is a county judge yeah. in Marion County in Ocala. Um, he is in his second term on the bench. And yes, we did meet in high school. We didn't date in high school. We dated when I was in college, but he sat behind me when I was 14 years old in American government. <laughs> So I have so many wonderful memories from high school, um, you know, just listening to Tommy and his stories. So it is um, just been great, you know, growing our life with him. This this week is our 20 year <gasps> wedding year oh anniversary. My God. Yes, more goosebumps. <laughs> so it's wonderful. Um, well, I love listening to Tommy, <laughs> his honor, and his stories from sitting on the bench are so hilarious. Anyway, I think he's an asset. Too, to well, you, we went to law to school. Bar. Yeah, we went to law school together and got married right before we graduated. And I can tell you, you know, talk about someone who keeps you entertained. I mean, yes. he has made not only the experience of going to law school, but being an attorney just um, just so wonderful to have someone like that in my life. He's a he's a wonderful husband and a huge support. And I absolutely love all that he's doing with the county court conference of judges. Yeah. And you know, he's got some really neat things ahead of him as well. I think that's awesome. Yeah. Well, Renee, thanks for talking to us today. Well, thank you. I appreciate your time. Um, no, yours. If we have listeners who want to learn more about you or find friend or follow you, tell them how to do that on the internet. Oh, sure. So I'm on most social media platforms, um, LinkedIn, Instagram, Twitter. You can follow me on Twitter at Legally Renee. So that's probably the easiest way to find me or, of course, on my firm's website. So we haven't even said what those things are. Renee is spelled R E N E E. Thompson. T-H-O-M-P-S-O-N. Your firm? Upchurch, Watson, White, and Max. They are a great, very active firm here in Florida. Sure. They're a statewide mediation group and just some of the most top-notch individuals you could ever work with in the mediation field. Yeah, they're so great. Um, when you decided, or not decided... <laughs> When I lured you in to the faculty <laughs> for technology. When you decided. <laughs> when I, that's what, you're right. That's what we should say. When I decided you should be on the faculty <laughs> for the technology roadshows, they reached out to me and said, hey, we want to become sponsors and support Renee. And I, I've seen so many law firms who don't really outwardly support what their attorneys are doing as far as community outreach and bar work. And that, again, just touched me. I just... I know I'm getting a little sentimental in this episode and we're not used to that, but I, I really just, it means a lot to me. And I'm not even a lawyer to watch how hard, not just you guys work, but everyone in the community who really cares about the profession gives back. So I want to say thank you. Oh, thanks. And I want to say thanks to them. They've been a tremendous um, resource to me and to have that level of support um, when you do what you love is really nice. Yeah, and I think that's a tip we should give. You know, if you're a lawyer looking for a law firm to support you and to be a part of, you want those types of things. You do. You do. We see so many young lawyers who either, you know, are just struggling where they work or they're not happy with the firm or they aren't getting what they need out of it. And I think that's really important part. And I've been watching lawyers either do that well or at least find that home or search for another place for 20 years. And I just think it's so critical to find that kind of support. And having having the background in service makes a difference. Um, look for law firms where those people are serving in their communities because those are the people who understand what it means to give back. And, you know, those are the type of mediators that they, they are. So they understand it. When I go yeah. to them and I say, you know, I'm going to be at a board of governors meeting for X, Y, or Z, they get it. Yeah. They really get it. All right. Well, I guess we got to go, Renee Rats. Thank you for having me. Thanks for coming on. And thanks, everyone, for listening to a new solo podcast on Legal Talk Network. If you like what you've heard today, love to get a good rating from you on iTunes. We'll see you next time. And remember, you're not alone. You're a new solo. Thanks for listening to New Solo with host Adriana Linares. Tune in again to learn more about how to successfully run your new practice. Solo. Here 
on Legal Talk Network. The views expressed by the participants of this program are their own and do not represent the views of, nor are they endorsed by, Legal Talk Network, its officers, directors, employees, agents, representatives, shareholders, and subsidiaries. None of the content should be considered legal advice. As always, consult a lawyer.